Hello friends, this video on classification of elements part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 19. Let's take one example on electron gain enthalpy. The question is, which of the following will have the most electron gain enthalpy and which will have less? Oxygen and sulfur. So if you see this, oxygen has minus 141 and sulfur has minus 200. But as I told, generally the trend is, if you go down the group, it becomes less negative. But here if you see, and fluorine and chlorine also is one example, a similar pattern where it increases actually, it becomes more negative and then follows the trend of becoming less negative. If you see, minus 141, it becomes minus 200, right? And then started decreasing with a negative sign. Here if you see minus 328, it became all the more negative and then less negative. Why it is happening? So this is happening because if I am taking oxygen and sulfur here, oxygen is very small. Very small. You see the atomic size? It's very small. So that's why a new electron when it is added, right? The new electron is added, it repel. So the electron gain enthalpy is less here. I mean, less energy is liberated. But if you start from sulfur, it follows the pattern because sulfur is comparatively okay kind size. So after that, you uh, add an electron, it, it loses energy. You add an electron in this, it loses less energy, it loses less energy, less energy. The trend continues. But in case of oxygen itself, it is very small in size, very small in size. Thus, the moment you add extra electron, it repel, right? It repel the the it repel a lot. A lot of repulsion is there because the size is very long. Same thing in fluorine also. The size of fluorine is very small. So the extra electron added, it is not welcome that much because the fluorine size is small and it, it repels. Now the question is which of the following has most negative electron gain enthalpy and which has least. So if you talk about uh, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, chlorine. So if you see my phosphorus, sulfur and chlorine, they are part of period 3, right? They are part of period 3. And uh, where is my fluorine? Fluorine is somewhere here, period 2, right? This is P2 and this is P3. Correct, that's how it is. My phosphorus is uh, 15 group element, 16 then 17. So that's how it is arranged in the periodic table. Correct. Now I have told that as we go from here to here in this direction, the electron uh, gain in enthalpy becomes less negative. Right? Sorry, more negative. Why? Because the atomic size uh, decrease. If I'm going from here to here, the atomic size is decreasing, right? Size is decreasing, so it's becoming all the more negative. So chlorine will have, if you uh, do a, arrange in the order, it will be phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, right? So this liberate more energy. So liberate more energy. That means chlorine, chlorine will liberate more energy than sulfur, than phosphorus. Correct. Now the question is chlorine, where should we put F? Now, since this guy F is above here, it should logically have more, it should liberate actually more uh, energy than chlorine on adding new electron. But as I told, chlorine has a very small size of electron uh, atom. So fluorine liberates less energy because the new electron that you add in fluorine, it get repelled by the small size. Correct. So I have something like this Cl. So fluorine can be somewhere here, somewhere here, right? So I have a uh, option of phosphorus, sulfur, fluorine or chlorine or 
phosphorus, chlorine, sulfur, chlorine. Which I am not sure now. I am not sure which one is the option. But the question asked me which one is least, least and which is max. In both cases, if you see that this is my maximum negative and this is my least negative. Okay? Because maximum liberated energy, liberated means negative and uh, minimum liberated energy is correct. This is the way to find. Also, if you want, we can do from electronic configuration also. So for fluorine, if you see atomic number is 9, so I'll say 1s2, 2s2, up 5 Correct. Let's say for phosphorus, phosphorus is 15, atomic number. So I'll say it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. Then I have sulfur. 16, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4, and then I have chlorine, right? 17, that is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. Now you see this guy is half filled, right? So it is stable. Others are not stable. So that means this guy will liberate minimum energy, correct? Why? Because phosphorus the outermost subcell is half filled. So it will liberate uh, minimum energy, it's stable, this way is stable. So my uh, minimum energy liberated is phosphorus. That means it is least negative. Now we'll talk about the maximum one. So if you see in this case fluorine and chlorine, the moment you get one electron in this, it becomes stable. So this is not in question, sulfur is not in question. The answer will be either fluorine or chlorine. Correct? Fluorine or chlorine. In fluorine, if you see, the size is small. So, the moment you add extra electron here, it gets repelled. Correct? Size is small. Small size means more repulsion. Here, if you see, it's very small actually, very small size. It's very, very small size. This chlorine, the size is decent, so the repulsion is less, so it can take this. So chlorine will have maximum negative. So you have either way of solving the question, either you write the electronic configuration and try to find why uh, adding an electron is favorable in which case and not favorable in which case, or you can uh, arrange the elements in the periods and groups, and then you can find which one will have. Uh, most uh, negative electron in the energy and we shall have many more. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.